Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to answer some questions about this apparatus right here. Before we get started, I did want to let you know about the freezer beef that we are now offering. If you are from the central Oklahoma area and you're interested in some Oklahoma homegrown beef, email me at aroswelding at gmail.com with the word beef in the subject line and I'll get you hooked up with Kayla and she'll let you know about the beef program. We're only limited to Oklahoma right now because we're not shipping yet, although we plan to one day. Surprisingly enough, a lot of you have asked what this contraption is right here. I also know a lot of you know what this is. This is a pipe beveling machine. I was introduced to the pipe beveler whenever I started pipelining. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Austin Ross and I pipeline welded for about eight years up until the last couple of years I've just been kind of doing my own thing, uh, mobile welding, shop welding around the house here. But I pipelined for eight years and that's whenever I got introduced to the beveling machine. They've got what they call a beveling machine, which is what we have here, uh, a couple of bigger ones back here on this table. But then they also have a band and crawler for bigger pipe. It's essentially the same idea. It clamps onto the pipe and a crawler crawls around it with a barrel torch. This here is a barrel torch and, and it bevels the pipe. So on pipeline work, whenever we make a weld, we have to put bevels on the pipe. Unless of course we are welding two factory joints together, which already have a bevel on it. For those of you who don't know what a bevel is, a bevel is just a cut on the end of a piece of pipe at an angle. The average angle is roughly 60 degrees. It's actually marked right here on this beveling machine. That's your average, but a lot of that angle just depends on the engineering of that specific pipeline. So that is a bevel. This beveling machine is set up to cut at an angle, or you can actually get a curved tip for your barrel torch. Not to be confused with a scarfing tip. They make a scarfing tip, which is made for washing a weld away. It's also bent, but they also make a bent cutting tip, which is made for situations like this, to where you can have your barrel torch in straight and still be cutting at an angle. These different types of methods for using a bevel machine just depends on the situation you need it in. So like whenever we're cutting a piece of, this is a piece of four inch pipe in like a ditch on pipeline work, Sometimes if the ditch ain't deep enough or whatever the case may be, it may be better to angle this because we're going to get more clearance whenever we go underneath the pipe versus like if you're doing fab work and jack stands like we are here, it may actually be better to have a bent tip because it's common with pipe fabrication to have to cut this way and then cut this way like over and over again. So a bent cutting tip is great for pipe fabrication. So this here is a Mathy Deerman. That's the brand. There's Mathy Deerman, there's H&M, and I'm pretty sure there's even a couple more. Uh, but Mathy Deerman is a well-known one in the uh, pipeline industry. This is a two inch to four inch beveling machine. The next size up that I know of is a three inch to eight inch. And then after that, you've got an eight inch to 12 inch, which is what this bigger one is here. They even make on up to, I think I've used a at least a 20. I know I've used a 20 inch beveling machine, if not a 24 inch. Um, but again, once you get up around the 24 inch, uh, you're gonna start seeing banding crawlers. They actually have banding crawlers that are smaller. So like I've seen a 12 inch banding crawler. So uh, they definitely cross. So the way these beveling machines adjust is they have what they call dogs. So for this, uh, that's the slang term, dogs. That's what we call them. So without any dogs, this two to four beveling machine will set on four inch, four and a half inch OD pipe. And then these are your three inch dogs. And they just set right in here. You of course have to take this off and put these dogs up underneath. And that spaces your beveling machine up to match three inch pipe. On this smaller beveling machine, it just has a screw that comes out. This is threaded and you just put it up underneath here, put the screw in here and so forth. And then the same goes for the two inch dogs, which are a little bit thicker and the contour is to match a piece of two inch pipe. When you jump up past the two to four bevel machine, we have the three to eight. This is just a newer one. That's the same thing as this, but I wanted to show you that it has 
These are called buttons, but they're just the, the minimum dog that you will need for the biggest size of pipe that this will fit in, fit on, which is eight inch. And then after that, you've got a little bit longer of dogs to fit the next size down, which would be like six inch. It looks like here I've made some modifications. This must be for like a five inch piece of pipe or something. This is totally custom. You don't usually have a nut right here but uh, I will show you. These here are the assortment of dogs that come with a bevel machine whenever you buy it. But obviously the longer the dogs are, the smaller of pipe that the uh, bevel machine will, will cut. So we call them dogs or spacers. This here is called your bridge. It actually disconnects with some bolts right here. You can pull these bolts out and this whole bridge apparatus comes off. Uh, I think they make it like that just for better storage purposes because it's kind of an awkward uh, thing with the, with the bridge on it. As you can see here, this bevel machine doesn't have a bridge on it. So you can just see it's nice and more compact to store versus this one here has a bridge on it. A guy that actually got me my first pipeline job told me to be careful with bevel machines by not laying them on the back of the truck like this or on the ground because over time it could bend this bridge and then your cut could be out of square. So a good habit for one, don't carry it like this also is something I just thought of, but it actually has a handle right here you can carry it. But also if you're gonna lay it on the back of the truck, lay it like this versus on the bridge. So like I said, if you are going to use a beveling machine, you do have to have what they call a barrel torch. These are barrel torches. This is considered a short barrel. It's gonna be for more like this two to four. Um, I can't remember, it may work in this three to eight also, but once you get up into the bigger sizes of pipe or a certain situation, you're gonna want what they call a long barrel. They also make, I'm pretty sure, a medium barrel, but these are actually the only two that I have is a short barrel and a long barrel. So a long barrel is actually commonly used on the band and crawler method, except it will not have this straight tip. This will come off right here, and this barrel torch will go through a donut. This aluminum piece is called a donut, and this donut goes inside a crawler that has a set screw on it, and you notice this donut has a slit in it, so that set screw actually tightens this on that crawler. That crawler has four wheels, two over here and two over here, that adjust to match the contour of whatever size of pipe that you're on, on that band. And that crawler just has rollers on it. Two rollers here, two rollers here, or two wheels. It clamps on to that band, and then this goes through the crawler. And like I said, gets squeezed in the crawler. And then this is called a knuckle, and it is put in place of this tip. You pull this off and you just put this on here and then you adjust your angle via the knuckle. You can do whatever type of angle you need. It's got a little ruler on here so you can tell what angle uh, that you're at. And then it's got what they call a button tip, which is a, they call it a button tip because it's more, it's smaller. It's made for this knuckle. And uh, that is what we use a lot in the band and crawler method on pipeline work. Another hack or trick that I learned while I was pipelining was, for one, this tool. This is a half of a original wedge. In other words, just cut in half long ways, and then it's notched here and notched here. And what it's good for is a wrench for a bell machine if you're doing a lot of fab work versus like taking pliers and running these wing nuts. You can grab hold of it here and here, but if you buy one brand new, you technically shouldn't have to use a wrench on any of these because these are made to be hand tightened. You shouldn't have to have a wrench, but once you start using a wrench, sometimes these threads get stretched out and it won't get tight enough unless you have a wrench. So if you do buy one used, this is a, a handy little, t little tool. Not only is it a wrench, but you can fit your pipe because you've got a spacing tool to fit your pipe. So anyway, back to the original hack that I wanted to talk about. When it comes to the banding crawler, some guys like myself have taken a donut and welded it onto the bridge. That way we can use a short barrel in our banding crawler. And like I said, this donut goes into the crawler, set screw tightens it down inside the crawler, then the crawler crawls on the band and goes all the way around the pipe. I just wanted to 
show you that while we were talking about cutting methods for pipe. And last but not least, yes, you can use a bevel machine on a horizontal piece of pipe, which brings me to where the commonly asked question comes from, which is the video that you've probably seen where I used this apparatus to cut fence posts off at the top whenever you're just putting caps on every post of your fence. Yes, it works uh, real well. That's getting heavy. And it can be more efficient if you've got a bunch of posts to cut to length. Now to talk about the price range of all this stuff. So a new two to four Matthew Derman bevel machine, last I knew was around $1,100. Might have went up, I'm not sure, but just to give you an idea, $1,100. And then it just goes up from there. I honestly don't know what three to eight or a eight to 12 costs new, but obviously more than 1,100. So it's not a cheap apparatus, but you can find them used. I found three of these on eBay. This one I got for around $500. And then, but it didn't come with any dogs, had to buy the dogs separate. And I think a set of two and three inch dogs cost 180 is what came to mind. And this has been several years ago. So I probably had six or $700 in this used bevel machine. And then I found my three to eight for, I want to say 600 bucks, something like that, six or 800. And then I found the eight to 12 for I want to say less than a thousand also or 900 or something like i got really good deals on these bellum machines your short barrel torch brand new is going to cost around 400 dollars, and then the long barrel is going to cost is it cheaper i want to say a long barrel might be cheaper or the same price i can't remember but around four or five hundred dollars for a barrel torch so very expensive setup depending on what you're doing but it's it's super handy and super efficient Let's go ahead and put a bevel on this piece of pipe just so you can see this thing being used. This here is a chain vice grip clamp is what I call it. And this is actually longer than what it comes. It comes with about half of this amount of chain, which works for small pipe, but they do sell extra chains separately. That way you can go around larger pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp this to my jack stand. This way, my pipe doesn't try to roll while my bevel machine travels down the pipe and then back up the pipe. Get my safety precaution, eye shield. It is like the desert in here. It's hotter than Hades. We're gonna turn our acetylene on first, which is your red hose. And then the oxygen, which is the green hose. And depending on how thick of pipe will depend on if I need to go all the way around it preheating it or, or if I can uh, just start cutting it. I know one thing, I have to loosen this off and back it up a little bit so I can clear my throat of my saddle there. So you can either adjust it there or you've got a wing nut here that you can loosen and this torch piece slides back and forth in this bridge. This part that holds your torch will move so you can adjust it here also. All right, now that we've got that adjusted, we're gonna do a crack our acetylene, light it up, get rid of the black smoke, turn on our oxygen, and then we're gonna quickly put a little preheat to it. This is only like quarter wall thickness. Um, but a little preheat ain't gonna hurt nothing. And then this is our cutting lever right here. I'm gonna wait till it gets nice and orange, and then I'm gonna punch through, but also move at the same time. I'm gonna start moving. With this thin of pipe, you wanna go fairly quick, but obviously not too fast to where uh, you jump out of your, where it quits cutting. I'm afraid to jinx it, but it's cutting decent for being an uh, old oil field pipe. Rusted like this, a lot of times it would have already stopped cutting. but it's also probably not going to fall off. It's probably gonna be held together a little bit by some slag. 
Yeah. Just as I fig just as I just as I figured. But even though it's held on by slag, you will be amazed at how nice that bevel is. Versus hand beveling it. It beats it beats putting a hand bevel on, let's just say that. Still might have to or most likely we'll have to put a grinder on it, but at least you didn't have to uh, grind the whole bevel on there. Set this over yonder. Take my hammer. Knock it off there. And then show you all the cut up close. It's got some alligator teeth marks in it is what I like to call it. Put a little sand and pad to her though. Over here it's a little better, but anyway, there you got you a little bevel. Once you've cleaned it up, you know, gotten your slag off, maybe put a landing, maybe not, you can always take a framing square, either one foot or two foot, depending on what size of pipe, and set on the top here, making sure it's in line as much as possible here, and checking your how square your beveling machine cuts. Anyway, there you have it. Here's the apparatus called the beveling machine. Now you know what it's called. Now you know a little bit about it. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully it will help you whether you're getting into the pipeline industry. At least now you're a little bit more familiar with it. Or if you do fence work and you had never seen such a thing, now you know about it. Hopefully it'll increase your production. My advice for this week is stock up your freezer. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're from central Oklahoma, and you're interested in freezer beef, you can email me at arosswelding at gmail.com with the word beef in the subject line, and I'll get you hooked up with Kayla, and she can tell you all about the beef program that we have going on. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for all the support. And remember, learn something every day. Oh my gosh. Where's my knuckle? Where's my bridge? Welded to my donut. Where is that? Oh, there it is. I found it.